Wisconsin, and Florida, and North Carolina because they took the vote away from people. So and, I, I have you know, two questions to go off for that. Actually, I got three questions to go off for that. So mm -hmm. one, do you feel that um, it's been rumored, do you feel that the Russians hacked the election for Trump to win? You know, just the fact that we have this question shows that we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Because that, that, I, I asked that because you see, like, Trump had so many people against him. Um, politicians on both sides, Democrat and Republican. So how did he win the Electrical College when she still won the majority vote? I, that's what's really confusing to me. I don't, I don't get that. Because isn't the Electrical College supposed to represent a community that chose to... Uh, um, majority vote for a particular candidate, or is that not right? Well, you know, they wrote the Constitution in 1789, and the men that wrote it, it's all men, they're all white, they did not believe that they needed to bother about the idea of popular government. Uh, you know, they, they wanted to compromise between some people getting elected and some people getting appointed. And uh, other people didn't count, and black people counted as three-fifths of a human being. You may have heard of that. They didn't have the right to vote. Most of the African-American population was held in slavery with no rights whatsoever, and uh, the ones who weren't held as slaves were second-class citizens in 1789. Women of any background could not vote. so. We've made some progress since then. Also, at that time, you had to own property to vote. So when this electoral college was set up, it was set up to just appoint the president. And they left that in the Constitution through the next 250 years here when we had all the other changes. When we when they fought the Civil War, ended slavery, gave the right to vote to African-American men. Then later they gave the right to vote to women and they took away the appointment of United States senators and said they could be elected by the people. These, and then they lowered the voting age, eight, change after change. Just to keep people from voting. Well, they let more people vote, but they never changed enough Right. The election of the president. So it's still done on a state by state basis. So in Wyoming, where it is mostly just cows, cattle, whatever. Right. And uh, about three black people. Yeah. Uh, a voter in Wyoming has got five times more of a vote than the voter in California because of the way the Electoral College is set up. And it's in the Constitution. We can't stop it. But it's not fair. It violates the principle of one person, one vote. You know, one person, one vote is a basic idea of a free society in a democratic system. And we don't have that. And we've been brainwashed to think, well, you know, the people get to choose. You know, some people get to choose more than others. It's like in the in George Orwell's book, you know, some animals are more equal than others. Well, when it comes to electing the president, some people get to choose more than others. Right. So the typical person, though, like the tip, like one of my friends, and don't stereotype me, but let's just say one of my friends were here. Would you? Would it be safe to tell them that their vote doesn't matter? Because that's what I hear a lot. Like my vote doesn't matter, man. Why the fuck are you voting? You know, is that the is that the the dream killer or is that really reality? What is the truth? On what you're voting on. Yeah. If you're right. voting on the president. Yeah. Not likely, but if right. you're voting on, you know like amending the Constitution, things right. like that, state-level stuff, your vote, you know, obviously has weight. They right. Now, what would y'all say? Uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to be general, because that's, that's me. That's what I do. I ask general shit. I'm the guy in here drinking Hennessy and, and Coca-Cola early in the morning. I'm sorry, mother, forgive me. But, like, I smoke marijuana. You know what I mean? I'm, I, people that know me know it. I don't hide it. I'm not ashamed of it. I would vote to legalize it. How do you feel about that? I mean, obviously, y'all, you guys are with legalization of marijuana. Is, can, is it safe to say that? Decriminalize it. Decriminalizing sure. it. Yeah, no, I should put it that full way. Full legalization. Full legalization. Full Why? Legalization. What are the benefits? What would you tell somebody, what would you tell a mother that doesn't want this happening, that doesn't want uh, the, the decriminalization and the legalization of marijuana to, to influence their 16-year-old child to, to 
almost can't wait till they're 18 to be able to purchase? What would you tell them? I mean, probably the same thing you would tell them if you wanted to legalize alcohol when it's prohibition. You know, everybody has the right to choose what they want to do. It's about, right. your, it's about your right. Right. You know, if you use cannabis, I know a lot of people that smoke weed, that smoke marijuana, cannabis. You right. Know, and it's whether you do it for personal reasons, for fun, whether you do it for, you know, mental health issues, seizures, PTSD. Right. There's all types of stuff that I agree with all of that. For. I agree with so, all of that. You know, with full legalization, that would give me the right as a person. Right. If I want to grow some cannabis and say my friend doesn't know how to grow cannabis or marijuana, I can grow it for him. I can grow it for my family. You know what I'm saying? The amendment that we're working on says that we should have the right to grow and sell the products of a farm. Right. You want to explain that amendment a little bit, Ali? Well, I, I also want to get back to the question here, which is, you know, what do you tell people? Uh, first thing I tell them is, number one, marijuana is not a crime. We're talking about a plant. It's a plant. You right. Know, it's right. not a crime. Now, we have a problem in our society of uh, discrimination and, and and prejudice right and the laws against marijuana in the first place were a result not of this is a terrible dangerous thing because yeah. it's not true right not reefer true. madness don't that, believe it but the reefer madness was definitely a racist campaign propaganda it was propaganda and it was lies definitely those lies are you know, it's said that a lie can travel around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. There's something about it. This man's got quotes. I love so, it. So the, the, <laughs> the you know, the, this idea that there's, you know, parents that are afraid that their kids might be damaged by smoking. Right, and overdosed disease. and killing yeah. people. Well, uh, maybe the flocker. It, it is. It <laughs> is. K2. Yeah, you can't. He's, we're not talking right. about laced weed. We're well, just talking K2. about regular K2. weed. K2. Yeah, yeah. We're talking right. about natural weed, folks. Well, natural. Well, what I'd like to say about that is that it, there's lots of things in life that are dangerous, and the way to deal with it is by education. Oh, I like by, that. In, you know, honest, Wise truthful words. communication. Right. And as a parent, I know children are not likely to listen the way you want them to all the time. Right. But uh, let's take the lies out of the equation. Let's take the fear out. Let's take the paranoia out. Let's say the reality is any young person now has a, knows more about how and where and how easily to get weed right. than most adults do. And right. in the States... This is this is where where statistics come in. In the states where they have set up a legal growing and distribution and sales and then regulated it, the shows that the use of cannabis by people under the legal age is going down. Right. You take away you know there's a story in the Bible starts out, the story of the forbidden fruit. You know, don't eat that apple, don't touch that. Which we right. Acknowledge. Right. Well, that forbidden fruit has always appealed to people. Right. But when you take away the forbidden fruit part, you say, "This is normal. This is natural." You're gonna do then more to protect your uh, young people and right. your old people and all of us. No. By doing that. Now and speaking. By, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ahead. No, but I'm just. I'm. I'm stuck over here because I'm. I smoke, man. I smoke recreationally because I like it. I like the way it tastes. You know, many reasons. I'm, my back hurts, you know, but uh, it, it's a coincidence because the other day, no, the other day I had uh, a couple people over for Thanksgiving and uh, we were on the topic of smoking marijuana. You know, I uh, I smoke with, with some of my family members. Like, we're open with it. We don't see it as a crime. You know what I mean? Like, for medical purposes and, and so forth and so forth. But, so... so we came up on a video where there was a young man, uh, I think he was with, uh, he was a younger guy, he was with his three-year-old nephew, and he was smoking weed with the baby. 
you know, like smoking weed, passing the baby fucking blunts. Yeah, with a three year old. Passing the baby blunts and so forth and so forth. What is your take on that, man? How do you? I mean, this is what I'm saying. When does it go too far? When that's, does the youth? That's too far. Yeah. yeah when does the youth? Because you know, the kid doesn't have an have an, have an an option at that. They're forcing it upon. And I know so that's not cool. Yeah, and I know this is education, but I'm saying with the new, I'm not gonna blame all millennials, but like literally, like this new generation of um, uh, of beings that that we're raising, man. It's just with the See, with the. That's what he goes back to the education. That's about education. That's just a stupid motherfucker. That ain't got nothing to do with the. Weed. Oh, he's definitely yeah. a stupid motherfucker. But, but to age, others though, that's watching this shit. That is like, no, this is why I don't want my kid doing this shit. Right. You know. You know then some so, some situations. Do, are, do you have to sit down need. with your kid now? I'm, nowadays, do you think it'd be safe for parents to sit down and actually talk to their kids specifically about smoking weed? What's the right age, do you feel, hey, I to know. smoke I, weed? I'd say, man, uh, when I was a young kid, my dad sat me down the road up a joint when I was five years old and passed it to me. So, um, See, I've been in similar experiences. So, I don't and, and, um, you know. And it it kind of depends, too, though. Maybe because, six. Like, for medical purposes, right? There are kids that have seizures. You know what I'm saying? That right. Need I I know this. Cannabis. I know, know this. And maybe you can't afford to get the medical version. See, so now I agree with that. I agree cannabis, with that. But just to give them cannabis out of the blue for no reason, right? You know, you don't want to do that. Kids are developing. Their brains are. What should the jail cell? Should there be a jail penalty for that? Um. Should there be a jail penalty if you give well, that's your child, child and abuse. three years that's old? That's child abuse or child neglect. So. Yeah, but weed, nothing's wrong with weed. You no, know, these are all the other people. Though. Then that's you'll like, get these conversations. There's, there's well, nothing it's cigarettes nothing wrong with... Nothing oh, wrong no, with there's something wrong with cigarettes. Your, I mean, the, the cigarettes <laughs> and alcohol. And alcohol, and alcohol. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Cigarettes that, kill people. Alcohol exactly, kills so. people. We don't even got to look up statistics to see how many people died from marijuana use. It's zero. There's never been a death attributed to marijuana ever in history recorded. About, I believe that. Not with those, straight marijuana. Like I said, it doesn't Facebook count with nothing like. What about those Facebook posts where they got people with their eyes bulged out saying well, they smoke weed? <laughs> <laughs> is that that's the new pro is that the new propaganda? Is that the new reefer madness? I, I think Facebook is probably more damaging to people's mental processes. I agree. Than, uh, I agree. As we're, I agree. Facebook, As we're live right now. Facebook, <laughs> tell them. Uh, uh, pay attention. There. Right. Uh, uh, the the story that you told about uh, some some uh, fool uh, uh, forcing uh, forcing the on, right uh, onto a small child. Right, it is child abuse in my book. Right, and, uh, you know it's the sort of thing society needs to prevent. And again, prevention of this kind of of uh, uh, abuse. Uh -huh. uh, can't, you know, you, you do need some laws in place to be sure, but you also need uh, a, a supportive community that educates people to respect, uh, you know, all of our uh, families, you know, from the from the youngest to the oldest. And, right, right. Uh, and especially to respect the idea that you, that people should be able to make their own decisions and that's got to be appropriate you know yeah uh, what's age appropriate for using weed i don't know i you know i i, I have to say for recreational uh, use for recreational yeah, uh you know usually people start experimenting with this when they're in their adolescent years right uh, like they experiment with sex and with liquor and with right. other temptations uh and part of the reason to take it out of the category of the forbidden fruit is to reduce that kind of temptation, but it's going to happen. Yeah, I still think uh, that you know that it's going to go on, but it will be less likely to be associated with uh, gang activity because uh, it is not you know it is not at the the uh, clandestine market and right. money involved. Right, uh, it'd be less likely to be associated with other antisocial behavior and it's just going to be uh more kept in context that's right. that's my maybe i'm a utopian maybe people yeah no no i do this. no 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 it's true though but like you i mean whether it's legal or illegal people are still going to you know um they're going to experiment i mean i'm i don't really agree when people say weed is the gateway drug because there's a lot of shit that's gateway cigarettes are gateway like you said first time i before you know what i mean that i was exper i was around that and you know liquor and cigarettes before any marijuana was around me so i mean as far as uh the experimental and the gateway drug i don't feel 
like weed is the gateway drug, but I kind of understand how some people it, think that it, it is. Kind of is, but not necessarily. That's I'm that's, saying that's, though, to hard drugs though. Why, how y'all yeah. feeling that? How do y'all feeling? Is weed the well, gateway drug? The, well, that's that's like a that's like a loaded question because like it, that's all a factor to well, who you're hanging around with and that's how true. impressionable you are. That's like, true. You don't just go from like, hey man, let's smoke this joint to hey let's smoke this crack. Right. It's a progression. You know what I'm saying? You might go from some right. weed to some acid to hey let me. Yeah, do a couple lives, you know. What I'm but saying? I'm but saying, but again, that's the company you keep in, and and your own person. That that's not. So that's what I'm saying. Like saying that, just because you smoke weed, don't mean you're gonna go to higher drugs. It's all about your surroundings, man. It ain't it ain't just weed. Is like yeah, like like I say, you don't make that drastic jump from weed right. to meth, man. So if you could just go to the store basically and buy a pack of joints like you could a pack of cigarettes. You still shouldn't feel like, oh well, after the cigarettes, I'm gonna go buy some some coke or some crack or some. You know what I'm saying? Like, where does the gateway? I don't you understand go that. Some more hard uh, life. I think a lot of it's influence. Like, man, fuck it, I'm about to smoke this crack right, right now. Man. Right, right. Go do some life decisions. Right. Not just, uh, not just smoke a joint. Just a, a jump. jump. Exactly. Exactly. But I do got a question though. Uh, they say in the porn industry that a lot of the male the male guy the male uh, porn stars in taking marijuana before they perform. What crazy, crazy. Anybody else want that question? Can you, can you relate Do to male to porn stars porn smoke porn weed they, they before they, they before they get it? Anybody know about that? Does anybody uh, know I, about I've that? I heard uh, Lexington still say that, uh, that it's uh, better than Viagra in the porn industry. Hmm. Any comments on that? Why? Never tried. Nobody. There's, there's, uh, Weed Viagra. A lot of professional athletes. And I think that's what you're talking about. A lot of professional athletes enjoy <laughs> yeah. using weed. We, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it's ironic that that the liquor and the beer industry are sponsored. The liquor. With, uh, all of you know, yeah. <laughs> the Freudian slip. Uh, the the beer industry, uh, the the booze people are the big sponsors of. Uh, football, basketball, baseball, the other professional sports. Um, the product they're pushing is poison. And if some of the uh, uh, men and women who are athletes out there are in fact preferring to use cannabis, and it's very helpful, I think, especially in the football, the football players with the injuries they sustain. Uh, right. They're treated as, uh, you know, uh, they're some sort of, of uh, deviant, some sort of uh, uh, problem person. They get suspended. They get they get uh, uh, you know, insulted and, and uh, uh, fined and, and put into treatment and stuff. Uh, but you know, this is the double standard, the hypocrisy, the stupidity of, of this whole marijuana prohibition uh, uh, nonsense. Except for the NBA, though. They let, their they let the NBA people smoke. The NBA cats NBA. smoke uh, off-season. You can do steroids, but you can't smoke weed. Right, right. I don't agree with that. That's I don't ridiculous. agree with that. That is ridiculous. That NBA is ridiculous. Uh, off-season, you can smoke uh, weed. Off-season. Yeah, only <laughs> off-season. growth hormones, but you can't smoke. They testing the kids now. Like in high school. They testing the high school kids they, for they weed. Test them off, uh, they test them uh, off-season too random. Are you serious? NFL players. Oh, okay. if you had, if you've had, if you had instance, yeah, 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 right, 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 you know, right. That is one of the more bizarre things about the whole drug war thing is, you know, they, they, they say, okay, you know, pee in the cup here so we can test and see what kind of, of dangerous molecules are in your system is like, uh, you know, communism wouldn't even think of that. My gosh, right, you know? right. They talk about invasion of privacy. It, once they start invading your privacy, they don't stop unless you stand up to them and try to make them stop. And the way that people have stood up to them in state after state uh, this year, eight out of nine states where the people had the right to vote on marijuana, eight out of nine states voted for legalization or for medical use of cannabis, depending right. on which it was in their state. Right. If people in Minnesota can get to vote for it, I think we'd see a lot of progress. So do you think uh, legalizing it and uh, decriminalizing it and uh, making it recreational, what does that do to the street dealers? 
the the average weed guy? Does that put them? Does it shut down the thing? black market? No, it forces him to step his game up and so no, no, do something other than that. If Cats are still selling sacks in Colorado. If you're good at selling sacks, yeah, know, somebody's selling a sack in Colorado. Yeah, to exactly. The store, start black market. You know, black market. Right. Uh, it could be like <laughs> they go legal a, a, after mm -hmm. after the end of alcohol prohibition. A lot of people who'd been uh, doing it at the risk of going to prison or getting shot were able to go into business and become legitimate business people, right. pillars of the community. Right. Uh, nice. you, you, you remember uh, uh, Dear Abby, the advice columnist? Yeah, the Abby paper. Yep, in, yep. Uh, in, in Ann Landers. Yep. Their twin sisters. Yeah. Yeah, their old man was, uh, uh, you know. In the booze business. Was he a bootlegger? Moonshine? And and, and after Prohibition ended, uh, became a pillar of the community. And this is it. You know, business opportunities are not found everywhere. And uh, there's, a, there's a tremendous business right now of the, uh, you know, the clandestine drug market. Right. Well, it's not taxed. It leads to corruption and violence. Uh, it's I, you know there there's there's uh, disproportionate and discriminatory uh, arrests and enforcement. Uh, it's really bad in that regard in Minneapolis and Minnesota. Well, why 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 have a a, a business model that involves mass incarceration? Right. Why not have a business model that involves uh, collecting taxes, uh, supervised and regulated commerce so people know what they're getting uh, and get value for their money that creates jobs. And when you're talking about marijuana, we're talking about cannabis sativa, right. which is a plant with many, many uses besides you can smoke it and enjoy the feeling. Right. You've got, you can make paper, food products, um, Construction products, all of yeah. Hemp does have a lot of yeah. Hemp is clothing, good, right, rope, right, uh, right. Uh, uh, oils and and many many other products. Right. Anything you can make from uh, hydrocarbons from, from from petroleum, right. You can make from carbohydrates from uh, from growing plants. They don't they don't want to put it out there, so, man. Yeah. But 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 it's 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 about to happen because um, and that brings me to my next question. You see that um. With the marijuana boom happening across the globe, the boom, and, and you know it's been legal. You have big, big businesses like Walmart and other companies that are investing in grow houses and manufacturing their own products of THC to, that is ready to hit the market as soon as we all conform to this. So, like, I just want to. So, so what's the next? So, if we're gonna, if they're gonna start mass producing it, if it's gonna become a big business thing, what is gonna happen to the quality of marijuana? And like I said, to the small, is it going to be another thing where small businesses get pushed out where it's going to be, this is going to be a big business, big booming industry thing eventually? I, I, I watch a lot of Vice and I've seen it where Walmart is already investing in huge warehouses where they're, where they're making the weed already. And Walmart they weed. They got their finger on the trigger for when it goes global or when it goes uh, national. They're ready. They're ready to take over. So. So like I said, like what is the next step? How do we how do we combat combat that, or is that a good thing, bad thing? Um, where where does that leave us? The government takeover of weed. But not even the government, big business. What, what well, that is which that? Yeah, government? no shit. Well, I feel like um, if we pharmaceutical full, companies, if we, do, if we do like more full legalization, you know, it's going to be you know all on the person. Yeah. You know, if you have the drive and the dedication to start your business and to build it up. You know, you can, you can sustain that. You know, right. the big businesses are going to come and take over because they've got a lot of money that they can push towards it, you know. Yeah. But the smaller businesses, just like the little mom and pop shops that you see, like we got a print shop over south, no words concept. We're not a huge print shop. We're just a small business, you know. But there's tons of huge print shops all over the city. You got yeah. guys, you can go get your shirt printed up for dollar fifty anything True. you want on it you know whereas you come to our small shop, business saturday today too you know you come to our shop you know we're gonna have to you know 
we're not going to be able to give you that deal that the big business can give, give you, you know, but that's all about supporting local, you know, that's all about supporting small business owners, you know, and uh, supporting each other. So it's going to be the same with the cannabis industry. It's not going to be any different. Well, Walmart and, is a giant, man. They, they take over. If everything. Walmart comes in everything and starts selling weed on the shelf, it's over. It's over. It's <laughs> over. The quality of weed is over. Just the whole enjoyment of weed like is said, over. What about even the pharmaceutical companies if it becomes like a medical thing? How do they like... Uh, right. I, I, I want to uh, just sort of suggest that it's not quite so simple because as we know, this is a plant that grows in the ground True. and anybody can grow it. So the basic ref there's two basic reforms that I think are absolutely essential that keeps me, I could sit back and watch the big companies, the Walmarts, come in and, and, and pretend to give us legal marijuana, and I know that pretty soon it would be just as deadly as legal tobacco, Right. but as long as people can grow their own, that's the key to preventing this uh, uh, corporate um, uh, domination. Uh, the other thing that I think is absolutely essential, it's probably the most important part of reform, is that anybody who has ever been arrested or convicted for marijuana Preach. should have their record completely erased. It, I agree. It never was a crime. The laws were racist in their inspiration, in their origin, and they have been discriminatorily, racially enforced ever since. It is part of a system that the, uh, Professor Michelle Alexander calls the new Jim Crow. The, 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 the reconstruction of the discrimination of racial caste systems on a so-called colorblind basis that is not colorblind at all. And anybody who has a criminal arrest record finds that it follows them in this computerized age Right. Wherever they go. It, For you weed. You can't get a job, you can't get a housing, you can't get education loans. Uh, and this is is really important to me. It's something that the Walmarts don't care about. The, 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 the people who want to profiteer off of weed don't care about. To me, it matters the most is that anybody with this kind of unjust law violation on their record should be entitled to have that erased. It should be nothing nullified you know not even pardoned like you get a pardon it's like saying well i did something bad please forgive me and i'll be a good person from now on this never was a crime so the people who know the most about growing producing and distributing cannabis are considered to be criminals now right i consider them to be entrepreneurs i also consider them to be heroes in a lot of ways as long as they're not using violence to advance their right their uh, activity right because they are providing the the uh, herb which is here for a purpose for the healing of the nations for peace and freedom and for justice. come come together for the come together I can see the Walmart shit happening man like Walmart having the superior like the bomb shit but like you said if everybody has the right to grow I mean I haven't seen a weed seed in a long time man so it's just gonna be are we all just gonna be growing regular shit and then Walmart's just gonna have the bomb shit? Is that how they're gonna they force us out of it? Right? Yeah, is that how they I mean we're gonna have to get the clones and then they'll make it a higher penalty for us to have a higher grade marijuana? Like is that the end? Is that uh, weed apocalypse right there? It's up to us <laughs> to decide what kind of how much how hard we wanna to work to, uh, to to bring about these reforms. You know? Right. And uh, the Part of the problem with the drug war is that it distracts from the real problems our society is facing. I agree. We've got an environmental crisis of global warming. We have a housing crisis. We have. A we do have a housing crisis. and a health care crisis. We have lost jobs because of their stupid trade policy. Hell yeah. Uh, NAFTA. All, all of these things uh, have, have the, you know, the, the quality of our life and, 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 and our whole national experience has, has been uh, disintegrating and deteriorating. And they've been, you know, running around, uh, especially uh, noticeable under the Reagan administration. You know, uh -huh. uh, look over there, terrible drugs. And, right. You know, and, and these are, so, so let's let's stop the d distraction. Let's heal the nations and the communities. Let's try to figure out how to really solve these problems that that. Uh, the incoming dictators are not going to do anything but make a whole hell of a lot worse. Right. You know, I, uh, 
I, I, there's a lot of people who don't realize just how bad things are going to be when the gangsters take over this country in January. Mm. Uh, gang, gang, Trump, Trump, gang. Yeah, yeah. Brr, Trump. It's gonna be gotta, bad. Uh, we gotta, we gotta campaign. We're that. trying to. Uh, you guys could maybe help us out with 2017. 2017. No more blunts. No more blunts. 2017. That's, they, 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 that's uh, we support the tobacco industry when we uh, buy these blunts, and I think as uh, black men in America, man, blunts are out of control, man. They're killing us. Grape flavor, peanut butter flavor, Kool Aid, Kool Aid, macaroni and cheese, blunts, tequila, tequila, Hennessy. Hey, I can't lie, when I did smoke blunts, tequila was my favorite. Hey, that shit <laughs> tastes like tequila. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I think they really put the alcohol time you in that. Blunt, Ali? Well, I smoked two weeks, just before the election. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was going uh, going down uh, uh, north end of St. Paul, going door to door to campaign to get out the votes, and here's right. a bunch of young men standing around, and uh, I'm telling them what I'm up there for, and they decided they got to test and see. If were I'm they African American? <laughs> they were. Oh, see how they come together. What, what kind of blood was it? You know. I don't. I can't. I can't tell you that. All I know is. Uh, was it tasty? Uh, it was. It was it, indeed. It, it was something wrapped in tobacco leaf. Actually. Yeah. That yeah, was a backwood. Exactly. Yeah, the oh, backwood. Back, oh, that's the worst. That's the harsh. Well, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the harshest. Yeah. Well, that, that, those are. He okay, survived nasty. it. So maybe that technically wasn't a blunt. Yeah. Well, no, no. Those are blunts, but okay. those are the worst. It's like blunts. a tree. Yeah, it's like tree bark that's wrapped like around smoking, weed. Yeah. That's like right. smoking out of a. Uh, well, they all said they were going to go out and vote. Yeah, so yeah, you did your job. Right? That's, I, how, right. that's how we campaigned. I hope, I hope those young men voted too, man. They probably so, did they like, right. man, he was cool, man. Hell yeah. He hit the, what? Back, he hit the wood with us. F with the ballots, what you guys are doing with the votes, man, is it going to help the, the legalization of recreational weed come to Minnesota? Like, what, what could you guys, what are you doing to bring this here, man? How could we all make this dream happen in Minnesota? What do we got to do? Get on board, vote, start showing up to meetings, come out and see. Where are the meetings? How are we how to so, keep uh, the people informed? How did we do it? How did you guys get involved, man? What was the last stand? What was well, the actually, what was the, like the, the, the final straw? <laughs> yeah. Actually, what was the what was the shit that got you into the party? Tell me. Well, to get me into the party, I was just doing weed stuff. I was going to the big events, right. uh sound set and handing out tons and tons of weed that I had and giving right. out free cards. I built up a social media following on Twitter. It's almost 50,000. Under the weed moniker. Minnesota Marijuana. I think I might be. I might like that page. Yeah, you probably do. Yeah, anything with that, marijuana, I like man, it. I a thumbs up. I, I try to go everywhere, man. And then right. as I got more involved in that, I ended up having like a cancer scare a few uh -huh. years back. Oh, man. Um, I didn't take any pain pills. I just smoked marijuana. Right. And then... uh I ran into Oliver, and he's pretty much been guiding me and coaching me through, you know, a lot of stuff. And he's like the weed Dr. Phil, y'all. Yeah, if he's If y'all ain't he's tuning in, y'all have to listen to this. Yeah, he's like the weed he's Dr. The Phil. Of Minnesota. Educated, you know though. He Educated. Got me involved with Legal Marijuana Now, which I'm now chairman of. He also got nice. me involved with Minnesota Normal that I just got elected as director for. Okay. And we're trying to use those organizations to bring, a, to bring together a unified movement. You know, we're trying to get more people involved in the movement, you know. It's all about voting. We have a constitutional amendment we're working on right now. Right. Um, if we can get the legislators to get on board and support the two legislators that are working with us, right. You know that could be a step in the right direction. I like that. So, is there, I got a question now, as just a fan of marijuana, has, is it legal to go smoke at the state capitol, man, on four twenty, or is that just a myth? I think a lot of people want to know that and they need well, to know this shit. I think you're the man with that. Who's yes. got the answer to that? Yeah, I've done I, it before. I'm actually, I actually. I've never done it, and I I'm actually, and I probably never will. I'm scared, y'all. No, nah, don't be don't be scared. I organized the one we did last year. We had a couple legislators out there. Um, okay. I usually go out there every year and give out about 420 free T-shirts to everybody. At um, the state capitol. At the state capitol. Yeah, like, do you got to stay on the lawn? Like, I've heard all kind of well, conflicting rumors. Any, They'll arrest you if you step out of line. Have your blaze up in front of them. You're going to jail. Nah, nah. If you yeah, you got anything left when you leave, they're pulling you over. What's the truth behind it's, it? It's nothing truth. like that. I want to come together. I want to go to the state capitol on 420. We get, What's we good? Get, we get tons of people to come up there. You could smoke. Everybody's smoking. Everybody's passing joints. The police don't mess with us. Are the police there? Well, that's... This, what Michael is saying is true, but the situation is, in fact, we, the, anybody that is smoking there is in violation. And we started doing rallies at the Capitol in 1987. Okay. 
uh, first, St. Paul. Uh, first in St. Paul State Capitol here uh, in 1987. We started doing them on an annual basis for a few years. They left it alone, but when it got big enough that it looked like, hey, something's happening here, then they sent in squads of people to pick them off. Everything happening at the Capitol on the Capitol grounds is under intense surveillance of about right. 20 different cameras right. and all that stuff. That's why I'm scared. So people were ticketed. People people were busted there a number of times uh, uh, years ago. It's entirely up to the Capitol security people how they want to respond to it or to the uh, you know city police. Now, one thing that happened this year, which had never happened to us before. The last four, we this last out, 420. Not the last 420, but more recently, over the summer, during the political campaign, while we're campaigning for our candidates for legal marijuana, uh -oh. we had uniformed police officers come up, give us donations, to get Whoa. the campaign buttons and stickers. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. We were not, <laughs> I, I was not expecting that, but times they are changing. It doesn't mean, clarify this, it is never yet legal to smoke at the Capitol, but the reason we're down there is to try to get it to the point where it could be and right. it'd be no big deal. deal. Right, right. Hey, I can't you know, what lie would happen you. if you get caught smoking a joint or a blunt or something at the Capitol? Just a fine? Criminalization. What's the criminal penalties? Are you that's going to jail? Because, that's not criminal because you, you're under the uh, the, the uh, forty-eight the, grams. Yeah, the forty-eight grams. Right. So, so, so I actually take been it. There, I've actually been there before. It's been years since I've been there. Right. I went in the early nineties and in the early two thousands. Right. And uh, I had fun, man. With me and my boys, we went there. We had fun. We chopped. We met people like you never knew was smoke, like of all ages, gender. Right. Uh, it's to come together, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, you smoke with so many cool people. Right. But the last time I went, man, it was kind of weird, you know, because like you said, the paranoia of... That's, I'm, the all, I'm always paranoid. So while bro. we're there, like right across the street, there was a wedding, but they were all dressed in costumes. Like... So like, yeah, I that. so all these people come out in costumes and we're like, um, I think it's time to go. <laughs> Everybody's high. Just, I don't know. Everybody. It's just weird. I was like, yeah, being high and then like being paranoid. You see that? It's like, right. I was like, yeah. Everybody started to kind of, kind of, like, escape a little bit after that. One. Right, right. Like, I, don't think uh, I think that's the last yeah. time I went. Actually, that was years ago. Though. Well, you notice that, you know, whether it's at the Capitol or whether it's anywhere else, uh, people have no real difficulty and no. Uh, real problem with uh, you know, breaking the law. It's an unjust, stupid law. Yes, and, right, uh, right. Uh, so don't you know? Some laws are not entitled to respect. But for your own, you know, for your own security, your own safety, your own uh, well-being, you have to use your brain when you're doing it. Uh, but what we really, really need to consider everybody is instead of trying to figure out how to go on breaking the law. Let's change the law. Let's yes. let's use the rights that we actually do have. Right. We don't technically have a right to break the law, but we do have the right to use what little freedom we have left. Right. And it's going to get less and all, less exactly. to, to try to change the law. And we have the example of the people in Colorado and Washington and Oregon and right. Alaska and, and DC, Nevada and now. Columbia, yep. Nevada, yep. uh, Massachusetts and yep. Maine. And yep. Uh, so, you know, they led the way. Nice. And, you know, it's about time the Gopher State could catch up. Right. You know, we do Moat. have the right to protest. Yes, that is true. Yeah. We have the right so far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Petition for redress of grievances right. and rights. Peaceful, assembly. peaceful protest. Peaceful protest. Peaceful, right. peaceful. Don't go uh, doing anything unjust. You risk the potential of going to jail. But if you're down for that, shit, go ask your right. Stay yeah. your right. Well, there are times when you get so upset at the way the machine operates that you just have to do something. Right. And some I agree. people will put their bodies on the line. I agree. Some people will go too far. I did myself in 1972. It's, you was uh, part of the revolution, though, man. Well, I, uh, you know. This man uh, seen Martin Luther King, man. That's incredible. Yeah, well, Dr. King believed very profoundly in nonviolence. And, right, right. Uh, the reward he got for that was a bullet. Right. Uh, this this country has blood on its hands, and it's going to get worse. Right. And uh, how we, as individual human souls, respond, you know, to what's been happening and what's about to happen, right, uh, 
we have to find the goodness within ourselves. I, 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 I don't know myself how much longer I can, uh, can, can even be a witness to this, but that's why right. it's important that, uh, uh, you know, uh, intelligent, talented, and, and virile young men like Michael and young women like our, uh, Vera, who's the uh, chairman of the board of uh, Vera Allen, the chairman of the board of the Minnesota Normal Chapter, uh, the people who hold the future in their hands. Right. It's. Uh, I'm ready to pass this torch along, pass this blunt along, whatever. Right. It, right. I like that. Burning here. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Right. It's time, man, for everybody to step up, man, and, you know, continue this fight and to voice your voice because, like I said, the, the poison, which we're socially, like, broadcasting from right now, but, I mean, you got to pick, you got to pick the shit that you want to get the nutritious education from, you know, you can get your mind poisoned from the guy smoking the weed with his, his fucking nephew that's three years old, or you can actually use Google and do some research and, like, research, you know, how to vote and legalize shit and to join the Minnesota Normal Party and be a part of shit that's probably going to be more beneficial to you and your surroundings locally where you're at. That's what I think you should be doing. But I'm just I'm just a person with an opinion. That's all I am. I can't make anybody do anything nowadays. Right, so, yeah, um... We have a meeting December 17th. Yeah, if plug guys, it up. If you guys want to come on out, we're going to be at Papito's in Minneapolis. It's okay. on Chicago and 48th. 48th. What time? Can, it starts at uh, 1 p.m. It's going to go from 1 p.m. to 3. Um, we raised donations. We did a Green Friday event yesterday where we gave away a bunch of free stuff. Okay. And uh, we raised enough donations. We're going to do a taco bar for members and stuff, so it's free food. Yep. Um, we're going to have shirts and stuff to give away. We're going to have information, and then we're going to be talking about a new uh, method that we're going to be using to try to get people active and involved right. in the community with contacting legislators, sending email letters. Um, making phone calls because that's where it's going to start at. You know, contacting your legislator, let them know that you want to see differences and you want to see a change, and see if they'll support any of the amendments that we're trying to right get into legislation this year. Right. Well, besides weed, uh, Florence Henderson and Fidel Castro just recently died. Does anybody care? Fidel Castro died. Yeah, he died uh, last night. Are you serious? Yep. Damn, man, my uh, my homeboy, and my homegirl are down in Cuba. That's uh, that's crazy. I didn't know that. He was nice. And who else? In uh, Florence Henderson. Wow. The mother of the the mo yeah, yeah, wow. Which brings me to uh, just kill me with a that question. One. I just saw uh, on Facebook or whatever, what happened to the other parents on the Brady show? Because, you know, they, like, met together and had, what, what, what three or four kids on their own? Oh. The what? dad and the mom. The, the, together? You know, the Brady, you never saw the Brady Bunch? Yeah, I seen the Brady so, Bunch. Yeah, so you know, and the story on the show. Oh, what happened they, to the other spouses? Yeah, what happened to the other Before they clicked to together? The, what to the I don't know. <laughs> that would, hey, you know what? That would have been a dope ass spin off show. Right. Does spouses. anybody know? I think one of yeah. them died. I know one of them died. Because they, they, they got out of the deal with no kids. Yeah, with no, and they never had no baby mama drama. Right, or baby daddy drama. Right. That would have been a beautiful spinoff, man. I never thought of that. I never thought of that. We get deep. We get deep. I told you we get deep. It it's must be the reefer. Well, I know one of them died. I, I, as far as I do remember the Brady Bunch, I think like uh, the the mom from the, the dad's was a widow. I don't know about the mom, though. Right. If she was, if it was Florence. Well, you know, mom. back in those days, man, it wasn't really uh, the right thing to like, you know, leave a marriage like that. The women exactly. stuck in that shit thick and thin. So, so yeah, they both had, they both had to die, man, to they death do your part. Yeah. That was it was television wise it was immoral. Yeah. Immoral. I don't think they would have ever done of. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and unheard of. But yeah, uh yeah, Florence Henderson, Fidel Castro wow. both passed. You Rest think in peace. Uh, does Fidel Castro dying and Trump becoming our new president affect our oh, brand man. new Oh man, uh, relationship alliance, alliance, yeah, I, our that, brand new mended you know, relationship with Cuba is that does that change at all? Does that change anything? I'm I'm hoping not. I just want to for the worst, I, I want to go, go too. That's what I'm thinking too. No, I'm just crossing my fingers, you know. I'm crossing my fingers, hoping everything works out. We've had presidents that got in there and said they're going to do all of this amazing stuff, right? And didn't do any of it, and I'm hoping. Which Trump is every is president. I'm hoping Trump is one of those. Right. <laughs> gets well, in there and doesn't right. Do, right. Yeah, stuff so you don't want him to do the right. stuff you said. Right. No. But he's no. been backpedaling now, so I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Everybody says we got to give him a chance now. 
Yeah. Uh, you had no, no choice. Do, we, do we give a chance or do we fight? You don't give a chance. You know who this character is. You, there's no question about it. There, he said, it, the, what's, what happened in this election, two things are important to remember. One is that the American people rejected Trump. The Mrs. Clinton, for, for all of her faults, she got two million votes more than this uh, know-nothing uh, um, bullying bigot Trump. Trump is, and he, you know, he got where he is, remember, by, by his traducing President Obama, by, by championing this right. whole lie that's how, that's how we about, got on. about President Obama. Challenging being, the birth uh, certificate. Uh, uh, not from America and being right. a Muslim. That's what got him started. You think uh, that was is, set up? This is, this is the, the this, this power seizure, I don't call it election, and I don't call him president. He's a pretender as far as I'm concerned. That's the politest thing I call him. I call him a dickhead dictator. Uh. This, this uh, uh. dickhead dictator, Trump, he Turn is up. going to be, you know, <laughs> concerned about one thing, and that is promoting himself and his ego. Right. And another thing is, you know, opening up every door of exploitation and ripping off both natural resources that belong to the American people and, uh, you know, people's jobs and, and welfare and well-being, the Social Security system, Medicare, that's in jeopardy. People, any, any security that people have, the model... The guy that he admires is Putin. He's the dictator of Russia. Uh, they, you know, they pretend they have free elections, but it's all, you know, it, it's it, it's not, it's a police state. We have the apparatus of a police state already. You know, you all had to be over North uh, Minneapolis during the uh, uh, Jamar Clark protests. You know, you no question about uh, the the extent to which the police state. Right. exists and uh, this is going to be a really bad time. It's like the South won the Civil War. You've got the Confederate flag will be flying from the White House. That might be an exaggeration, but the spirit of it is that. Yeah, it's definitely uh, the spirit of that. You know. And remember, when fascists get into trouble, they start wars. They start a war, declare martial law, uh, I don't think this is going to be something we can just ride out. We got to learn to to uh, look at it the way it is. And I say there's three things that I'm advising my daughters: survive, resist, bear witness.